All right, all right, what is up, people? My name is Larry, and I am the resident student pastor at our Brazelton campus. And my name is Hannah, and I'm the high school resident pastor at our Lawrenceville campus. 
And listen, this past week, you voted in our student pastor challenge on social media, and we have the top three winners. Larry, why don't you go ahead and introduce who we oh, got tonight? I will introduce who we got tonight. Fellas, why don't you make your way up on stage, folks? Give a nice warm welcome to our participants in this week's student pastor challenge. First up, right here, representing the Flowery Branch Campus, the one and only Jeremy Lacey up here ready to go and to represent. And now representing M12 at Hamilton Mill Campus, the Jacob Bartlett. And representing our high school at Lawrenceville, we've got Dave Carr. All right, all right. Oh, these people are ready to go. And we have a good challenge for you guys tonight. Hannah, what are they doing? All right, how about before I tell you what we're doing, I'm gonna tell you why it's important. Because, you know? You know. The winner of tonight's challenge is going to win for their campus student ministry, Krispy Kreme this next week. Oh, come on! I mean, who doesn't who love Krispy Kreme some donuts? Krispy Kreme. I like them. You like them? I do. So, what they're going to be doing in order to compete for that is a nailed it challenge pumpkin carving style. Mm. So, we've got this beautiful pumpkin that's already been carved. Would you like to see what it looks like? I would love to see what right. it looks like. Hannah. All right, let's do it. Wow. Come on. Harry Potter. That is Harry Potter carved into a pumpkin. It's, it's kind of magical, right? Yeah. 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 So, I just don't know if they can do it. I don't think they can. So what they have to do is they have to recreate Harry Potter on their pumpkins, but they've got these different tools under here. And they've already picked their tables, not knowing what's underneath these mm. black things. So I don't know if they can do it or not. I don't know if they can do it either, but they only got three minutes to carve the best Harry Potter that yeah. they can. Three minutes. Fellas, you ready? Ready to do this? Think you can do it? It look ready. Okay. Okay, For well, we're going to put green. three minutes on the clock. Get ready. Here it is. Three, two, one. Get oh. carving. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. All right, Those what does Jerm have pumpkins. over there? Okay. Um, Jeremy over here. Um is trying to figure out the lay of the land. Um, he's got a, a little, I don't, that's just a really tiny knife right there. He's got a, is that a pie um, scooper or pie cutting, scooping thing? And an, an ice cream scooper. Um, but Jeremy, you better get to work, man. And that is a sword. Um, he also has a sword um, to carve into this pumpkin with. Um, very meticulous. He's getting started. Uh, what, what is Dave doing over here, Hannah? Dave has some tools that are actually kind of meant, I think, to carve pumpkins. He's got some goop scoop stuff. He's got these okay. sharp knives, this carver, two of those, a, a marker. I I think he's kind of got marker. a nice little setup. A marker. Yeah. That, that is the, that is the like, secret. That's a really, that's that is the most important. underrated pumpkin carving tool, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Very I'm not nice, sure what he's nice. doing with it, though. Uh, but I, I winning, have faith he says. In him. I winning. Think. You heard it here first, folks. Okay, Jacob has some sort of what do you call that? A chisel? A chisel. Okay. Um, he's chiseling Harry Potter <laughs> into his pumpkin. Um, uh, what oh. is this? What What are these? That's um, a great question. It looks That's like a, a screwdriver. Question. It kind of um, looks like dental tools. Well, dental tools. <laughs> in a way. Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know how he's going to be really able to use sure. that to an advantage. Um, just kind of scraping a large dent. Um, I you didn't guys know only that have a minute and 20 seconds, by the way. Eyes, but apparently triangular eyes? Oh yeah, my gosh. I did not well, know Well, you that. only have uh, a minute and 15 seconds at this point. Oh, goodness. Uh, so you might really want to get to work. Uh, Germ, I think that that sword could wow, do some serious work technique. on your pumpkin. I like I'd it. just like to, to say that. Um, how's Dave doing, Hannah? He, can you give us an update? He's doing okay. Um, he hasn't fully made it through the pumpkin yet. Um, so I'm not, I'm not too confident. Okay. Right well, now. But he still has 57 seconds left. So okay, what is his tool of choice, by the way? This pumpkin carving thing. <laughs> it's a colossal carver. That's exactly what it is. Oh my gosh! Germ has gone for the sword. He just oh. sorted the pumpkin. He straight sorted it, and now is 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 he's sorting it again. This is the tool of choice. Let's see what Jacob's doing. This is phenomenal. He's still just chiseling away at this pumpkin. Jeremy Lacey, make knight of the Harry round Potter. table. You only have like pumpkin. 28 seconds left, guys. Not a lot of time. Yeah, that's that's 24 left struggling. now. <laughs> you gotta work fast. All right, chisel away, okay. Jacob. 
You got a piece out. Chisel That's away. Progress. Interesting. Who do you think's wow. doing the best right now, Larry? We've got 10 um, seconds left. That's not a lot know. of time at who, all. Who do I think is winning? Um, oh, no. Goodness gracious. I, it's really hard to say. I haven't seen I, Dave's I pumpkin, choose. but I'd like, oh, I think he, Time's he's, up. You got to put your, time your is tools up. down. Tools down, folks. Oh, tools man. down. That went by Excuse really quickly. Excuse me, sir. Tools down. Thank you very much. All right, go ahead. Face your pumpkins towards right, the audience. Place your pumpkin and put upon it on the light, this light. So that we can see your beautiful creation. Face it towards our lovely audience. Oh, yeah, you can be Lum <laughs> <laughs> He says Lumos. That was that was good uh, material right there. But to judge which campus will be receiving Krispy Kreme donuts this week, we are bringing up the only man for the job. Jeffrey Wright. What's Welcome up? What's stage. up? Wow. Uh, I got some work to do, but we talked to the contestants beforehand and we said two factors will be judged. One is clarity of image and the second is a sense of magic. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, if Elmo was punched in the face, he would still look closer to Harry Potter than that. I do like the wow. scar. It is noted. That's hey, well all right. Played. That's all right. Okay. Over here with Jacob, dude, like, you cut two holes out of it, and then, is that a smile? Glasses, uh-huh, where are the eyes? Okay, uh, and then uh, Dave here has a scar. Uh, three minutes did go by very fast. I, is that a mouth or a slant for an eye? I, no, this is not your time to talk, that's tough. <laughs> Uh, this is not a clear winner, but uh, I would suggest to you that Dave, with a great scar, is our winner. Age 12 Central, enjoy wow. your donuts. Good job, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> that was an overreaction. You need to calm down, sir. It's okay, you can um, go get your own Krispy Kreme. <laughs> he says uh, it is dumb and rigged, but whether Man. it's rigged or not, uh, I believe won. that Dave is our winner. <laughs> so that Rightfully means, so. Yeah, the what does that H12 mean, Hannah? Lawrenceville gets Krispy Kreme this next week. Lawrenceville Pretty is exciting. getting Krispy Kreme. Congratulations to you, folks. And well done, all three of you, yeah, truly. Yeah, you guys did a great job. I'm very proud job. of you. Very An proud. An excellent job. Well, listen, stay tuned to our social media to vote in the next Student Pastor Challenge. If you want to see your student pastor up here, you got to vote for him. That's right. You got to vote. So, guys... It's been fun, but it is now time to throw it over to Zach uh, to get us ready for some worship. And we will see you soon. Have a great night. What's up, students? Good to see you. I hope you're ready to worship. Hey, we talk a lot about worship, but what does that mean? Scripture says that we're called to be living sacrifices. And I know when I say that, it's like a little bit weird. They're like, what is a living sacrifice? But there's a scripture in 2 Samuel 24 where David says, I don't want to bring a sacrifice to God if it doesn't cost me something. And when I talk about worship, when I talk about a sacrifice, we're bringing our lives, our wills, who we are, every decision, every breath we have to the Lord. And we're saying, God, this is yours. I'm going to be a living sacrifice. I'm going to submit my life to you and I'm gonna let you have your way in my life. So as we jump into worship, have that in mind tonight. Have that in mind that like, I'm going into worship as a living sacrifice. I'm giving all of who I am to all of who God is. So let's jump into worship, guys.
God, who you are demands to be praised. You are bigger than our circumstances. You are bigger than our fears. You're doing something amazing in this place in our hearts, God, and we don't wanna miss it. We don't wanna miss it. Would you make us more aware of what you're doing in our hearts? Make us more aware of your presence. You're the only one to be worshiped. You're the only one to be praised in our lives because you rule over everything. And we just wanna give you that honor. We wanna give you that glory that you do. So we say these things, we plead for these things in your name, amen. Okay, thanks for worshiping with us. It's that time of the night, so grab your Bible and notebook and let's go. Well, what is up, students? I am so excited to get to be with you guys tonight. My name is Alex Otto. I get to be our student pastor over at our Sugarloaf campus. And guys, I am specifically so pumped for tonight because we are starting a new series this week called Lonely Places. And we'll unpack what that means in just a little bit, but I have been unpacking lonely places in my time with God over the last few months. So I am excited for tonight. But before we get into kind of the meat of the message tonight, I have a confession for you. And here's my confession. See, when I think of this topic, this idea of loneliness, I actually think about a person. And I know that sounds really, really bad. Like when you think of the word loneliness, you probably shouldn't think of a person, but I do. So that's my confession. And here's the person that I think about. I actually think about a guy named Toby Flinderson. Now I know some of you guys are at your watch parties right now. Like I have absolutely no idea who Toby Flinderson is, Alex. And that's okay. I'm actually really proud of you because it means that you have stayed off of the office bandwagon for as long as you have. And I'm proud of you for that. But for me, I'm pretty basic. So I really like the TV show, The Office. And I love all things to do with The Office or like Jim and Pam's relationship because they're adorable, but you know, whatever. And so if we have the opportunity to bring anything into a sermon to do with the office, well, I'm gonna do it. So here we go. I'm gonna give you a little bit of backstory before I give you the clip, but here's the backstory. You ready? Toby Flinderson is a guy that works in the HR department at Dunder Mifflin with a guy named Michael Scott. And guys, Michael Scott is like the most ignorant boss Ever. Like he's super not self-aware at all. And Michael Scott just hates on Toby the entire TV show. And he does it so much that Toby becomes basically the running joke of the show. So here you have it, Toby Flinderson and Michael Scott. Oh my God. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. Who brought in donuts? Somebody got donuts for my birthday. Happy birthday. You didn't know it was my birthday. I guess I forgot. Well, I guess I forgot to give you a donut. You're serious? Mm. Guys, I will never not laugh at The Office. Like, if I watch any part of The Office, I'm just going to die of laughter. But now that we've talked about my favorite TV show, I know you guys want to, too. So take five minutes in your groups, tell everyone about your favorite TV show, and then talk about maybe a time where you have felt like Toby from The Office.
All right, all right. Let's bring it back in up here. Awesome. So I think that there's probably a moment for all of us, if we were honest, where we could raise our hands and say, yeah, we probably felt a little bit like Toby from the office at some point in our lives. Now, hopefully it wasn't as bad as Michael uh, made it for Toby, but chances are you felt alone at some point in your life. Like chances are there's been a time in your life where maybe you felt alone, lonely, or not seen. Like maybe for you, you feel alone right now in your friend group. Maybe your friend group just doesn't seem to understand your family situation and what you're walking through. Or maybe you feel alone at school right now because you just cannot seem to get a passing grade in that one class that everyone else is good at. Or maybe for you, this whole season feels pretty lonely because everyone is going back to like normal life. And because of the risk of COVID, you're still stuck at home. And guys, those are things that all of us would feel lonely in. But tonight, I actually don't want to lean into that specific thing that makes us feel lonely. See, instead, I actually want us to talk about what we do in our loneliness. See, I don't know about you, but my natural tendency when something makes me feel uncomfortable is to just really run far away from it. See, I I don't know if this is you, but if I'm alone and I happen to feel emotional or I feel like I'm stuck in my own head because I'm alone or stuck in my own thoughts, or maybe I feel a little too unprocessed, a little too anxious. If I feel that way when I'm alone, then I'm just gonna run far away from whatever's making me feel that way, right? I'm gonna be with people 24 seven. I'm gonna spend the night at all my friends' houses and never be at my own because I just don't wanna be alone. And maybe tonight you find yourself in that. You just don't wanna be alone. And see, for me, I have this challenge when I don't want to be alone that I think might be a good challenge for you too. See, the Bible actually tells us that sometimes, even though we might not want it, sometimes it's actually a good thing to be alone. And guys, this isn't something that the Bible just talks about. This is actually that we see that Jesus actually did. See, Jesus was fully God and fully man. And Jesus spent the last three years of his life on earth just teaching people how to be in relationship with God, teaching people how to walk in his ways, teaching people how to follow him. And there is something that Jesus did, this habit that he had, this thing that he did consistently throughout his life. And I want us to look at it. It talks about it in Luke chapter five. It's this one liner that's pretty awesome. Check it out with me. It says, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. See, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And guys, that's what we're gonna talk about this series. In this series, lonely places, that's what we're gonna talk about. But what does it mean when, I'm, when I say lonely places, right? I know all of you are like, okay, cool. That's what we're going to talk about. But what does it mean? Here's what we mean when we say lonely places. It's going to be up on the screen. Grab a pen, write it down, grab your phone, get it in your notes. It's this. A lonely place is a place by yourself where God can speak to you, a place by yourself where God can speak to you. Because guys, the reality is that we all have lonely places in our lives. We all have places that might be a little emotional, a little unprocessed, a little messy in our hearts, but it's what we do in those lonely places that matters. It's what we do with it. Because the reality is that I have a choice in it. You have a choice in it. We get a choice in what we do with these lonely places, these places where we are alone and God has the opportunity to speak to us. See, I get the choice, and if I lean into Jesus in that, or if I run away from him. And we're going to pick up in, this, in some scripture tonight in Mark chapter 6, verse 49, I'm sorry, verse 47. And you guys can go ahead and flip there, but I want to give you some context to what's going on. Because what we see is that we aren't the only ones with this choice. 
See, the disciples had this choice in the Bible too. And I want us to lean into what they did in this. So in Mark chapter six, what we see is another example in Jesus's life where he is going into a lonely place. See, the disciples had just gone on this basically like a mission trip and they come back to Jesus and they are pumped. They're like, Jesus, bro, we gotta tell you all that just happened. And Jesus says, okay, that's awesome. I wanna hear it, but you guys need to rest. And so him and the disciples, they hop in this boat, they go across a lake, and when they get to the other side, they thought that it would be secluded, they thought that it would be some lonely time together where they could rest up and celebrate everything that had just happened, but instead there was this huge crowd there. And this crowd was waiting for Jesus, and they were like, yo, Jesus, we've been waiting for you to teach us, we've been waiting to hear from you, and Jesus is like, all right, you know, he's Jesus, he can't leave his people hanging. So he's like, I'm gonna teach these people. And as soon as he was done, as soon as he dismissed those people, he turned back to his disciples and said, now it's time to rest. You guys hop in the boat. I'm going to go to a mountainside to pray. And so that's where we pick up in this scripture, guys, where Jesus is on the mountainside and the disciples are in the boat. Here's what it says. It says, later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he, Jesus, was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Basically, there's a storm coming. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. And here's the verse I want us to notice. Here it is. He was about to pass by them. He was about to pass by them. And guys, I just, I want to pause here for just a second. See, in just a minute, we're actually going to give you, wherever you are, at your watch party, at home, at a campus, we're going to give you the opportunity to spend some lonely place kind of time with God. And here's what I believe, students. I believe that in just a minute, Jesus is about to pass by you, just like he did with these disciples. And when he does, there's going to be an opportunity for you where you're going to make a decision You're going to lean into Jesus or you're not. And before we get to where you respond, I want us to see what the disciples did. Let's pick back in the rest of our story. Verse 49 says, but they saw him walking on the lake. They thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. And immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. And y'all, obviously this was like an insane moment in history, right? I mean, Jesus just walked on water. That's pretty sick, I'm just saying. But let me frame it this way for you. See, what if Jesus walking on water wasn't just like a Jesus flex? It wasn't just like, you know, I'm fully God, I'm fully man, I'm gonna just go walk on some water right now. You know, no no big deal. But what if it was actually an invitation? Like, think about it. What if this was an invitation to not like cry out in fear like they did, but to be courageous, to have faith, the faith enough to get out of the boat and walk with Jesus and actually spend lonely time with him on the water? See, what if the disciples missed their invitation? And students, hear me, what if, just what if, Jesus actually is giving us the same invitation now, me and you? See, what if our invitation tonight is to drop our fear and bring all of our lonely places to Jesus out on the water? So I wanna read our bottom line for tonight. Write it down, get it in your head, because it's so important, guys, it's this. We don't have to be afraid of the lonely places. We can bring Jesus into them. We don't have to be afraid of the lonely places. We can bring Jesus into them. And so guys, we're gonna go into a moment right now that we like to call read, write, pray. And what we're gonna do is put a scripture on the screen and the scripture is really cool because it's actually the same story that we just read tonight about Jesus walking on water, but it's from a different author in the Bible. And this author, he gives us some different details of the story that I think is gonna be important for you tonight as you process 
with God. And then after you read that scripture, there's gonna be a question for you. And that's just for exactly that. So you can process with God. And then there's gonna be a prayer that I think will be really cool for you to lean in with Jesus. But guys, this is, this is your opportunity. This is the decision that I said earlier where Jesus is about to pass by you and want to spend lonely time with you out on the water. So how are you guys going to respond? like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea I worship your majesty.
All right, y'all. So as we end out our night together, I have a friend up here from the Sugarloaf campus. She's a student. Her name is Sydney. Sydney, say hi. Hello. <laughs> and Sydney is so awesome. And she has this story with God that is so powerful. And I've gotten to watch Sid just really grow over the last year-ish. Uh, and it's been really, really cool to watch her just find a fire for God, really even through this weird COVID season. And so I, uh, I saw her like two weeks ago-ish, and she shared her story. And I ran up to her after, and I was like, Sid, you have got to share that with the rest of our students. So I brought her here tonight, and she wants to share with you her story. So take it away, Sid. Okay, so my story starts right before quarantine hit. I got diagnosed with depression and anti-anxiety disorder. I was getting all the help I needed for that, but it really took a toll on me because I was putting a label on my mental health, or, you know, the doctors were. And that really took a toll on me because I was starting to let it define me and let it label a person as I am, which I shouldn't have done that. Pro months before quarantine, I was getting really involved in partying, getting caught up in high school and labels and all that. And it really was becoming the center of my world, when in reality, the center of my world should have been Jesus. It took, me, it took me a friend coming into my life to realize that that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And I was trying to fill a void that only Jesus could fill. I didn't know these feelings could change and I could feel as I do now. It took me pushing myself back into Jesus' arms because I felt so alone, so lost, and so worthless. And I didn't have or know anyone else to really turn to about how I was feeling. I started with praying because I didn't have the effort to do anything else. So my mom made me breakfast the next morning and that was Jesus answering my prayers. And it was such a peculiar, peculiar thing that I just knew it was him. And I knew it was him answering my prayers, letting, him know that, letting me know that I was loved and that I was worthy of so much, that I had people that cared for me. Then I started getting back into the group of a Bible study and a daily devotional and things like that. And once I started, I didn't wanna stop. I continuously wanted more and more. And it was like an overflow of gratefulness, overflow of love, overflow of insanity because of everything that Jesus was bringing into my life and the way that he was working through me. And a couple weeks ago after a watch party, I was sitting alone in my room and I just felt called to worship, just to worship, just me and God, just in my room, nobody else. And so Trimble came on, Reckless Love came on afterwards and I'm just bawling my eyes out, like completely like tears, like gasping for air, like in between, each, in between each tier. And I just felt like I needed to be giving something to God in that moment. And I was realizing that I wanted more of God, but in reality, he needed more of me. And so as I'm handing over my depression and my worries and my labels, and I'm saying, here, this is for you. Like, I need you to have control over it. I need you to take care of this because I can't anymore. And he just said, okay. He, wel he welcomed me with opening arms and said, okay. And I said, this is it. This is me, I'm yours, and this is everything. Ooh, guys, I have goosebumps standing here. I am so proud of Sid. Um, but here's what I love about your story, Sid. Here's, here's what I love about Sid's story. I love that uh, that impactful moment, that kind of shift of giving everything to Jesus, it happened when she was alone in her room gasping for air uh, while she was just worshiping God. And it wasn't in a church building, wasn't at a watch party, it was in her lonely place with God. And what I love about watch parties is that now you can kind of process this and process Sid's story, process what happened tonight in your lonely place, your lonely time with God, with your group. So leaders, take it away. Okay, what a great message. The night's still not over, so let's jump into our group to have some great discussions.